Hi everybody, Nigel here again from Nigel's Modeling Bench and I've got yet another kit review for you. Um, yes, it's another Russian vehicle if you like um, and yes, I've been captured by the Russian bug. But I am going to do another review for you today on something that isn't Russian so uh, yeah, just to um, sort of break it up a bit. As you know, I've just finished two kits so I need to get another project on the go. Um, yes, I've got some projects on the go which I should be finishing but uh, I feel like starting a new one. Um, and this is the fairly new kit from Meng, which I believe is pronounced Ming, but um, we call them Meng in, uh, in, in England. Um, and this is their 135th Stegosaurus series SS014 and it's a 9K 37M1 book. Yes, it's pronounced book, not buck. So it's as a, um, as a Yorkshireman would say, book. So it's a book, um, an air defence missile system. Um, and we can see it has movable suspension, workable tracks, movable missile launcher, vinyl pipeline, track assembly jig and pre a PE painting mask, and road mask for road wheels are provided, but apparently the mask doesn't exist. Hatches can be open or closed, it has no interior, a clear light and periscope parts are included and precision PE parts and reflective foil are also included. Um, I was looking for this kit. Uh, Phil Flory's doing a bit of build of it at the moment. If you get, if you're a member on his channel, you can go and see. And certain areas of it, he's struggling with a bit. I think um, it looks a bit sort of complex, and it's got the usual sort of be very careful of the main ejector pin marks and those great big um, bits you get stuck in out where they use Z pins. But um, we'll cover that in the build anyway. Um, so yeah, I was looking for this kit. I looked at Amazon and saw it for £59, delivery next day for Prime. I thought, okay, that sounds a lot, but then kits are not expensive these days. So I looked on eBay and I found that Model Hobbies were doing it for £50.81, so that's that's nearly a tenner off. And then once again, I noticed that little flash came up, 10% off for that day only on eBay. So I ended up paying about £42 or £43 for it. So, you know, quite a bargain really. Got it from Model Hobbies. Uh, model hobbies in the past have had a bit of a reputation for stuff going missing, being not being delivered, taking ages to deliver, whatever. I must admit, in the last, I don't know, six weeks, I've probably bought four items from them, this being one of them, and they've come like that. And I ordered this on uh, Thursday, and today is Monday, and it's here. I mean, only, it, it was free postage, it was sent second class. So, um, yeah, I mean, really, really impressive, especially, you know, over the Telford weekend as well. You'd have thought he would have been getting himself ready for Telford on Friday. But uh, nope, here it is. Today it's Monday and here it is. So I'm really, really pleased. A bit of history about this thing, because um, nobody seems to talk much about the history about it and, and what it's actually all about. Um, as I say, it's pronounced book and in uh, Russian that, that translates into beach. This actually followed on from um, the, 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 the launcher before it, the missile system before it, was the Cube, which was KUB, so people, some people call it Cub, but it was actually Cube. Its NATO name is SA-11 Gadfly. Um, development, design, whatever, started around 1972, and it went into service in 1980, and then the M1 version was released in 1982. It's designed to take on low-flying aircraft, um, and it's actually known as a Tellar, which is a transporter, erector, launcher and radar. OK, it can track up to 15 targets simultaneously and provide six firing solutions, which is the number of launchers you'll have in a battalion. Um, each um, ver each um, book has a loader with it. So the loader can also fire and is controlled from this unit. Um, so the M2 versions could lock onto four individual targets, which is uh, quite incredible. Um, has a 95% hit rate and I think here, the M2 was actually produced, was, was actually designed during the time of the Soviet Union, but then was never actually made until after the collapse. So it was built later on. In 2018, uh, these were used for shooting down Tomahawk missiles in Syria. And of course, we know all about the other allegations in, um, with these around the time of the Ukraine uh, conflict. So um, that's a bit of history about it. Let's have a look around the box. Um, one thing that's nice about Meng is they use matte boxes so you don't get this horrible reflectivity you normally see. So on the side of the box, you've got some information so I can 
put that there and then you can pause it and read it if you want to and then we've got the um, version there and it's nice to see that Meng are actually including what it actually is and what you know what time and and and, and what vehicle it is uh, what um, country it's for and everything this is something i've been noticing lately on hobby boss and trumpeter they don't seem to do that they just give you an image it just tells you what it is i'm sorry it doesn't tell you what it is it just shows you what it looks like so there we go we can see under the box ss014 and then we've got all our um, another version here which is in the um, tricolor camo and then we've got all our paint call outs there which unfortunately are just called out in the um, AK interactive colors so which I don't believe are 100% correct to be honest I've got a set of AK Russian paints and they don't look right to me at all but um, anyway so yeah there's the, there's the image on the box of it it's uh, it's a side on image obviously with the writing like that so take the top off the box no sellotape or anything on this one and we can see it is pretty well packed we've got our radar unit there and then this is part of the actual hull structure by the look of it. Oh no, that's going to be the missile launcher. So we've got the hull there with the missile launcher. So we can see it's a, a fairly decent sized vehicle. So we've got uh, individually bagged sprues. So we've got one, two, three there. And then we've got two in there, which is our wheels and everything. And then we've got our actual missiles themselves, which you can see are very large indeed. I actually thought we had an option of different missiles. And then we've got our tracks here with our track pins. So there's actually one, two, three, four sprues in there. And there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. One, two, three, four, so there's 60. So there's 240 individual track links there to play with. You know how much I love tracks. I really do enjoy them. Got some photo etch here, which unusually for Meng is in, looks like it's stainless steel rather than the normal brass uh, yeah it's more like a tamiya stainless steel we got our decals there some of this horrible vinyl piping which is um, awful what i tend to do with this stuff is freeze it um get it a bit harder and then you can remove the seams and then a quick brush over with some tamiya extra thin will actually cure the um will actually cure the seam lines for you and then we've got some clear parts there and our track assembly jig obviously we'll go through all this in detail in a minute We've got a colour call-out sheet here, so we'll have a look at that again in a minute. And then our black and white instructions, which is a 28-page booklet. So let's uh, get this out of the bags, and then we'll um, then we'll come back. Okay, so if we start with the paper, we're looking at the colour call-outs. I'm going to keep moving the paper because we've got some re reflectivity going on here. Um, this is version A, which is the uh, unit unknown. Um, it says it was number 230, six air forces, an air defense army, uh, Russian air force, Pushkin city, Russia 2007. So that's in the like tricolor scheme there. Then we've got here, this is Ukrainian, uh, not known, un un unknown unit, sorry. Um, mil Ukraine military parade on 25th Independence Day 2016 in Ukraine. And that's got the digital camo, which would be um, a great little tryout for the Infinity Cutting Mats I recently reviewed. So there's a possibility. And then we've got here the uh, anti aircraft missile regiment, Finnish Army, northern suburbs of Helsinki, uh, Finland 2004. And that is again in a three color camo. Well, it's actually a four color camo um it's hard edged by the look of it but it's actually uh you know normal camouflage rather than the um you know the, the it's sort of blocky camouflage rather than the digital and then on the back here we've got the missiles in the green color and uh, red at the back end and, and white on the nose and you can see there we've got all our stencil placements as well for our decals so that's um that's all very nice then we've got an a4 uh, instruction book here as I say SS014 and it's all in black and white and we've got our um, this is going to be Chinese English probably Japanese or Korean and then we've got the this looks like Russian or Ukrainian on the back there so they are different languages so if I just hold this up so you can read it so you can uh, freeze frame there and you can read all that which has probably come straight from um, Wikipedia or something there you go you can read that there okay and then going over the page we're starting off with um, basically what tools we need and they're advertising their own stuff here now men do their own, own tools and everything um, side cutter leather pouch <laughs> right. 
it looks like you need a leather pouch and then you've got a limit regulator I'm assuming this is the they're showing their men cutters here so that you're getting a leather pouch in the, the cutter with and the adjuster with it so we've got our three color versions called out here a B and C so you need to identify which one you're gonna do um, and then of course you've got your aftermarket as well you can go and look at that and maybe um, choose even more different options but as I say it's nice here that men are actually telling us what they actually are rather than just having a B and C and then you've got to go and guess what they are where they're from what country use them and everything so here we've got the um, the road wheels and the sprockets going together and the uh, idler there and then we're putting on our um, return rollers and the gearbox ends there it's normal tank hull um, construction then we've got our some parts going here that's going to be some towing eyes or something we'll have a look at those in a minute idler spindles there I would recommend fitting those don't glue them and then what you can do is actually perfect the uh, the tension on your track so many times I have found with tank kits you glue the idlers on and then you find you need like half a link to you know you take out half a link to get the right amount of stretch or add a link to get the right amount of flex and you know you, you, you it's, it never quite works out so if you leave that loose then you can actually make your track links up to as they suggest 126 links or whatever it is and then you can put that in and adjust to the right tension um then we've got a working torsion bar suspension here going in so all the different numbers oh no, they're all the same um we've got different numbers on the actual um arms there so you have to be a bit careful with that then going on over the page then we've got some more greeblies going on to the actual hull itself adding on the idlers uh, we've got some splash guards there at the front and the mug clearer coming out of the middle of the sprocket if you are going to have your wheels coming off you might not want to fit that yet and then we're going to attach some upper hull parts and it's telling us here we've got symbols to tell us to remove certain bits or we must fill certain bits so um, for if we're doing A and B we're going to remove this piece here and if we're doing C we're going to remove that little lump on the corner there that piece there so um some mesh going in there some photo etch mesh and then we've got our tool going on here a back of an axe then we're going to fit our upper hull now what you would probably do in the construction of this certainly what I will do is do this then fit the upper hull and then do all this afterwards um, I won't go on and do the wheels and everything until afterwards then we've got all the details going on to the upper hull all these um, these access doors to the sides they're all obviously open a ball so maybe their plan is to bring out a kit with interior detail um, I don't know or they've just done it for um, for, for more accuracy in the molding got some um, this is going to be some I, I'm guessing this is going to be hinges for the for the actual um, doors themselves or that maybe fold down mirrors I'm not sure and then we've got a closing panel going in there more doors going on the side more photo etch there uh, headlights got different headlights for different versions so again watch what versions you're doing and obviously check out your references because these not, aren't always right the kit manufacturers don't always get it spot on and then you've got your lights going on the front here adding in the front hatches you've got the option to have the hatches open or closed um, obviously see no point in having them open there's nothing to see inside so um, unless you want to build an empty out rusted out <laughs> wreck or something um, pretty pointless having the whole the uh, hatches open so then we've got our mirrors going on here so that was actual that was conduit by looking at it, conduit for the lights by looking at these parts I was talking about up here so we've got some more bits going on here more hatches um, and then more parts there again more bits and pieces there's some sort of ducting there going on and then rear plate is going to be rear plate is going to be different for the different versions We've got these, um, what's that, ropes there by the look of it, or cables. And then more greeblies going on the front. Lots and lots of small detail parts. Rubber mud guards there by the look of it. Um, and then we've got a towing cable going around here. So I didn't know, oh, it's a B20. It's a plastic part rather than a piece of copper wire, which in some ways I prefer. Um, trying sometimes to get the copper wire to lay naturally, it's much easier to have a moulded plastic part, in my opinion. Then we're going to assemble our tracks so selling us here we've got 113 links aside and it's telling us to remove ah remove one one link just to link the tracks up together that's what that's saying there and then we've got some semblance of a driver's bay there 
Or is that, no, that's, not, that's not a driver's bay, that's going into the actual, um, sorry, what am I talking about? Forget that. That is actually the upper unit. This is the launching platform and that is part of the superstructure that you can see down into here. So forget what I said, that's not a driver's compartment at all. Then we're adding the, the, the rear section or the front section, however you want to look at it. And the base is going on there. We've got some more of these doors and handles and everything going on. Um, vents there, more doors on the side. Uh, this is the hydraulic lifting cylinder for the um, for the actual main firing mechanism. And that's going on to the back there. So that's going to be nice. You're going to leave that obviously pivoting so that it can all work. And then you've got the more launching platform parts going on, bits and pieces, odds and ends. And then we're building up the actual radar there. This is the missile fixing device and radar assembly. Um, so this is just the mounting that the, ra the missiles will sit on in transportation. And then you've got the radar. And if you look at Phil's build, he's actually managed to leave this office a clipping fit. And then you can paint that separately because obviously it will be a different shade. It will weather differently. It would look different. Um, and then we've got the optical sights going on here. Fire extinguisher, by the look of it, is it? Not sure what that is. Some sort of cylinder. And then we've got an optical sight going there. Then we've got starting on the missile launcher sides. And this is all pretty complex and fiddly and all wants to fall apart as you're building it from what I've seen. Um, and then you've got your vinyl parts there. I believe you can actually use plastic cement on these vinyl parts. I don't think you need to use super glue. Um, then the other same on the other side. So that's the right rack. This is the left rack. And then you're going to bring all that together. 30 of Mr. Page here. There we go. Then we're going to bring all that together along with the hydraulic ram and that's going to go down in there and all be workable. Um, telling you to paint that at the moment. Well, I wouldn't bother at the moment. Um, and then C83, they're telling you to actually push it apart to get that in, I'm guessing. Then we're going to add some more Greeblies onto the back here. This is going to be part of the uh, loader system, I'm guessing. And then you've got the antenna there, which is a press fit onto there. We've got a, is that a light or something there? I'm, I'm assuming that's a spotlight or something there. And then we've got some railings going on here, which will look very nice with all the seams removed and everything. They're going to look lovely. And then we've got more launcher fixing bracket assembly. Okay, so this is some stiffeners here going into that rear end. So that's all going to look nice. And then moving on to the actual missiles themselves and adding the fins and everything. And it's telling us to paint certain areas of it there. And then we're going to add the missiles onto the launcher, add the launcher onto the actual hull and then connect up the actual, um, uh, what's that? That's going to be part of the mechanism there for the loader, I'm guessing. Not sure. No, that's going to be part of the antenna mechanism. That's what that is. Yeah, I was talking back here about a loader, wasn't I? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not a loader because it has a launcher, a loader launcher next to it, putting the missiles on from the top. So there we go. And then we've got our sprue call outs there showing everything. So let's quickly have a look at this plastic. Um, we'll stop with the decals first. So we've got an interesting little decal sheet here with a lot of stencils on it. Um, printing looks quite nice. My experience of main decals is they're lovely. Um, so yeah, we've got all our stencils there. Lots of carrier film here between the stenciling. So you'll have to be careful of that. But um, all in all, all in register, colours look vibrant, I'm not sure about accuracy, but it's nice to see it's in register, you've got those blue rings are in the centre of the white circles, so that's cool. And there we go. That's most of those stencils are for the missiles, I believe. So that can go on the front of there, put those back in the bag so they don't get damaged. Very strange when I opened all these bags up, some of them were stapled, some of them were heat shrink. But if you look here, you can see a bit of a mess. I'm wondering if Meng, on the day this kit was actually uh, boxed up, they had problems with their um, heat shrink machine because, um, as I say, half of the bags are stapled. So here we've got the uh, clear sprue. So that's just going to be some, this has got the usual lovely Meng protective film around it, which is a fantastic idea. Uh, so we've got lenses there for our lights and everything. And we've got our track assembly rigs. And we can see here when we look here, these lenses are get the focus. They're lovely, aren't they? Look very, very nice indeed. And then we've got the vinyl sprue here, which is the vinyl pipes around the back of the launcher. And again, we'll have a look with 
uh, the seam doesn't look too bad but um normally it's a bit of a nightmare i built their smirch and they got the vinyl piping on that and that was the seams on there were terrible and very difficult to get rid of and somebody suggested freezing them so i did that and it did make life a bit easier here we've got our photo etch again i say this is uh, like a tamiya stainless steel rather than the normal brass although it feels it's a lot thinner than Tamiya photo etch as we know it's normally a nightmare but this is um the nice stuff about this is you'll be able to dent it and mess with it if you want to weather it up a bit but you can see there we basically got our mesh grills okay all looking nice so let's start getting some plastic um start off here this is the actual this is the actual launcher itself as you can see it's a fairly decent size lump it's um what is it it's about 165 millimeters long so it's quite a decent lump of plastic and it's got some lovely detail on it if we look at it close up you can see we've got an injection mark there so that'll have to be sanded off we've got lovely um checker plating kind of effect on there which is very nice and some lovely detail on these hatches so yeah really uh, really crisp and clean not much to see on the sides because as you see we've got all those doors going on but we have got some nice hinge detail there for the for the doors that's very nice and back in this bag and then we'll look at the main hull we've got some uh, vinyl parts there and then we've got the actual main hull itself and the whole base as you imagine there's no detail on the inside at all uh, it says here 2000 and 2018 i thought this kit was newer than that but um there we go there's the whole base and this is the whole upper and uh as we can see it's absolutely full of holes where all those doors go so that's going to be fun fitting all them and cleaning up the edges very important to get the edges and the sprue connection points cleaned up and we will look at how many have done that they may have actually done the sprue connections onto the inside faces we'll see about that and then here we've got a look out this is where you get these main ejector pins with half of the pin sticking out like that and uh, they are you know you need to be careful of those and then what's left behind make sure it's sanded flat if it's on um, mating parts so we can see there we've got some nice detail close up we've got some um, access panels there some more access panels some nice bulk detail around the um the turret ring if that's what you can call it some detail on the back end some detail on the front end here it's a shame there isn't any driver's um, area detail because it would nice to be nice to have those hatches open they look quite good when they're open if you build their um their uh what's it called their shilka kit then um yes yeah, really really nice it's got the um the driver's hatch detail the driver's compartment detail so here we've got the whole floor now, I'm not sure about accuracy but the detail is lovely on here lovely base detail in there access panels for everything there's probably a escape hatch there I imagine and then nice detail in the sides no ejector pin marks or anything we've got an injection marks so there there's one there and one there and there's a nice sort of textured finish on there so that's very nice we'll put our poly caps back in there that back on the top i can put that back in its bag later and i'll go through the sprues as they came in the box um, this is sprue d so here's sprue d and we've got some um very pretty obvious parts here this is our big uh, radar cone here which is beautifully molded it's got a lovely bit of texture on it that's the back end of the radar and um, this is the bit that just will just clip on if you want it to and we've got some um, grab rails or, or, or support railings or something or protective railings there got some more grab rails here um, some bits and pieces there this is the uh, base of the actual uh, launch launch head the turret if you like uh, we've got a lot of doors here going on the sides of everywhere some more panels there <clears throat> more panels there more panels and they've all got this pressed steel detail in them so opportunity there for a little bit of chipping a little bit of weathering um, and as I said earlier what is nice if you look close up 
you will see that the sprue connection points, although they're not the finest in the world, they actually go on to the back of the part. So when you actually cut the part off, you sand the back flat and you're not having to sand the edge of the panel and run the risk of actually getting it out of flat, going too deep, polishing up a, a textured surface or whatever. So um, yeah, have a close look around there. See some of that hatch detail is very nice. You see there, lovely detail there. There's an ejector pin there breaking off. Again, we've got the all the screw connection points. They're actually onto the edges of the doors there. They're not going onto the back at all. And that one's onto the edge as well. You can see here, these go onto the mating face, which I, I actually like. I like when companies do that. So you don't actually have to sand the sides and it remains if you have got a textured finish, you don't have to worry about ruining that textured finish. But all these doors here, you can see the sprue connectors go onto the back edge, which is a nice touch. And these here go straight onto the edges, but then that's glued edges, so that's not a problem. We've got a nice little panel there with some lovely detail on it. Very nice. Glad I got this kit. Some. Um, they're really really nice I do I love their um, SA2 launcher on tracks but uh, unfortunately apparently it's got a lot of inaccuracy issues so there's two of these sprues these are for our four um, missiles so we'll put one to one side we can see we've got lovely detail there we've got the fins going on um, so these are obviously molded on already and then you've got the, the fins 90 degrees to them going on we've got the exhaust by the look of it there noses are molded on they're not an add-on cap so a little bit of seam work a little bit of sanding they'll um they'll look absolutely lovely very nice indeed and then moving on here we've got the uh the, the wheels and the suspension and everything two of these so i won't bother getting them both out but um yeah we've got some lovely detail there we've got our gearbox end covers here not quite sure what that is. That's some kind of um, step plate, I'd imagine, because it looks like it's got the, the plunged holes in it for grip. And then we've got our sprockets here. Nice to see they've got the, the sprues on the side of the sprocket tooth rather than on the end of it. So that's nice. Um, little bits and pieces. There's that cable. That's, that, that's not a cable. That's a rail. Somewhere in here, there's that cable that goes over the front in place of a piece of brass wire. And then um, idlers there by the look of it. Lovely detail on them. I'll give you a close-up look in a minute and then we got some more door panels there there's our torsion bars some hooks some towing hooks lights more light parts there's some grab handles there or towing hooks or towing eyes and then we've got our main suspension arms there so I'll give you a close-up look you can see we've got some pretty heavy tread on these tires um, which is probably overdone to be honest um, that rim around the inside is probably overdone. They would have mould lines on them, but I don't think they'd be that. And, and of course, as soon as it's been used in a while, they'll be all sanded off anyway, so I'll be getting rid of them. And we've got a gearbox there, an end cover with the nice bolt detail on there. And then there's a, another hatch with some detail. And then we've got the back face of the wheels, front face of the wheels, lovely bolt detail. And then we've got the back face of the idlers and the front face there with, again, bolt detail for the centre cap cover and the actual holding on bolts if you like and then we've got this I'm guessing that's a step or something it looks like a back seat panel out of a Willys Jeep but there we go and there's our suspension arms there that's the outer faces of them you're not going to see any of that anyway very nice let's just say we've got two of those and then I'll leave the tracks till last Through here which is this is going to be all our um, launching missile launching areas I think so these are going to be looks like these are the supports that actually hold the, the missiles up they're the bits that pivot up and um, there's part of the system there as well and then there's all these little greeblies and bits and pieces going on so uh, yeah and then the antenna here very nice no real detail on the back to speak of but lots of ejector pin marks to look out for and be careful of with your uh, assembly. I'll give you a close-up look on some of this. It's really lovely. Lovely crisp detail. Very nice indeed. A 
There we go. That's that one. And then final sprue before we look at our tracks. Here's that cable. This is sprue B. These are our rubber um, mud guards, the splash guards to stop everything all splashing up over the sides. And then this looks like some kind of grill panel for the hull. More panels there, doors and panels for the top of the hull by the look of it. And then we've got some bits and pieces for I don't know what they are as part of the um, aerial erection mechanism I'm guessing. Some lovely moulded detail on that cable there. Lovely tread plate on there. And then these look our rubber mudguard ends. And there's some sort of probably intake ducting or something for the engine there. Very nice indeed, all very crisp, all very clean. Um, again, we've got sprue attachment points, but these time going onto the edge. So on these panels, we will have to be careful. And for that sort of job, I would recommend these, the premium ultra precision sanding sticks. They're really nice for doing flat surfaces or get yourself a set of these from premium hobbies. £9.95 plus the cost of the double sided tape and the um, and the actual film itself, but they're basically abrasive. You can see I've been using these basically abrasive film stuck to the back of a pad. So they're really, really hard. So when you actually come along and you want to remove these sprue nibs on there, you cut them off the sprue, you can hold it and just sand away. And you know, you're not going to end up with an undulated surface. You can slide it sideways and, and retain the radius. So uh, yeah, really, I did a review of these. Have a look really worth their weight in gold they're fantastic and for 9.95 for that set i mean there's seven in there and they're marked from 220 up to two and a half thousand grit to coincide with the um the infidy uh sanding film you can get sorry guys i had a coughing fit there um dry throat so uh there we go i'll give you a close-up look at these some of these detail on these parts you can see there's some lovely like uh, grip plate checker plate detail whatever you want to call it on there which is really really nice there's that cable I don't know if I can get it in the camera but you can see the lovely molded on detail of the cable I actually prefer that to actually copper cable itself purely because of the way you can make it lie rather than have it looking false and then there's that cable there as well which is um which is going onto the hull more checker plate detail more detail for the side panels there you can see we've got the rubber look molded into them with them being looking floppy. And again, you've got the rubber molded look on there. It's all distorted. That's how it's supposed to be. It's not faulty. And there we go. Careful not to snap that one. But again, this is the sort of thing Ming does. Thoughtfully molded the, the sprue so as not that, that won't snap, won't snap off very easily. Really, really nice. And then finally, we've got our four track sprues here. I'll just get one out. He says. So on here we've got, as I say, uh, I think it was 60, wasn't it? 60 um, track links per, per sprue. Put it the right way up. This is sprue K. And then we've got our track links here, which clip together and then there's a pin that goes in from one side. So um, some clever moulding actually. To get a molded hollis, they obviously slide molded. Um, that's why they're so far apart on the sprue. But that's some pretty clever molding there, I must be honest. And they're designed to, as I say, they're clipped together and then the one side has the pin. Now I've seen people I've seen some reports where people have said they're absolute garbage, some reports have said they're brilliant, so I don't know. We'll that uh, we'll see. I as you know I enjoy making these tracks. The only problem with these is you're gonna clip them off. And where they go on to this face, you've got that front face is radiused. So again, you're going to have an issue. But again, these premium hobby sanders, perfect for that. Hold the, hold the track link in your hand. Do, do, do. You know, one, two, three, four. That's probably all you're going to need. And then you know you're going to be flat and square um, rather than trying to sand them with a skinny stick or something that way. And then these pins are obviously going to push in through the side when we make them up in the jig. A little bit of flash on that one there, but nothing to, to worry about. And I can't see, no, there's no ejector pin marks on them at all. The ejector pin marks are actually in the sprue, which is a nice touch. 
and they've got integral horns as well so not too complex on the assembly front so there we go guys that has been the Meng or Ming wherever you want to pronounce it 9k 37 m1 book air defense missile system and as I say it's a beautiful model I will be building this and I probably will build it online for you as well so um there we go hope you enjoyed this review I'm going to put another review up in a minute and uh, so there'll be two today today being Monday the 11th of October of November 2019 play me November already thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon bye bye